guess you need to build a strong strategy for digital transformation to achieve nationwide goal. And our next session will focus on how decision makers are developing and implementing digital transformation strategies to attain business growth. So in this panel discussion, the delegates will focus on the importance of innovation to drive digital transformation for PSU. So the panelists will discuss and deliberate different stages of innovation and the kind of support PSU need. So let me call upon Mohammed Ojale, Senior Special Correspondent, ET Government, to spearhead the conversation. Hello and welcome to ET Government National PSU Virtual Summit. As we have discussed in previous panel discussion about digital transformation, and as to how PSUs are mitigating the challenge of COVID-19 in these difficult times. In this special panel discussion focused on innovation driving the digital transformation approach of the public sector, we will be focusing on the innovation part. And to take the discussion forward, I'm joined by Mr. Saurav Kumar, Executive Vice Chairperson, EESL Group. Uh, Mr. S.V. Srinivas Rao, Chief General Manager, IT, NTPC Limited. Mr. Rajiv Chandra, Executive Director, HPCF. Mr. Ashu Singhal, Chief General Manager, Corporate Strategy, Planning and Advocacy, Yale India. Mr. Manav Sagar, Head of Digital Innovation and National Program, Worldwide Public Sector, Amazon Internet Service Private Limited. Without taking too much time, I'll first go to Mr. Saurav Kumar. Sir, you know one thing, over the last four months, as I have spoken to most of the other in different panel discussion, most of the PSUs, be it the public sector organization or a private organization, they all have been trying to ensure business continuity. And they are actually some level of technology they had, they had played quite immense role. Would you like to share as to how your organization uh, mitigated this challenge of pandemic in the last four months? We are a relatively new company and a relatively young company in terms of the age of uh, the employees, the average age of employees in ESL is, is nearly about 33, 34. So this is an age which is always very good in adopting technology. So I'll, I'll answer this in two parts. What did, what did we do internally and what did we do externally uh, in terms of uh, uh, getting IT on board in virtually everything. So, Internally, we took a decision at the, that moment. In fact, we were planning to do that, but uh, I think the lockdown just hastened it. That we went completely paperless, uh, maybe in, in the first week of April. So everything, every internal approval, every file is now an e-file. There is no hard uh, bound file that uh, we see in ESL. So that was one. Uh, also, we uh, everything is on SAP and ERP, so it makes the integration of decision making very, very easy. In fact, all our board meetings, like many other uh, uh, PSUs who are there on this panel, is, is all paperless. So, more importantly, if you look at what one of our um, uh, things that we are doing, in fact, two or three of our, of our, of our um, interventions, uh, how did it help public services and public utilities? And I'll pause for a minute to explain that we are doing the smart meter program in, in three states. Uh, we've completed this in the New Delhi Municipal Council area. Uh, we are doing in, in uh, UP where we have installed more than 12 lakh meters uh, uh, before the lockdown and about 2 lakh meters in Haryana and we are also started off in Bihar and Rajasthan. Now in all these places, even during the lockdown where there was no um, uh, body actually going and, and, and uh, looking at meter readings, we are proud to say that we have given 97% billing data to the distribution company. The distribution company has been able to issue bills to these people and actually collect money. So that is something which is, which is actually very, very, I would say, a significant success of technology. Let me tell you uh, about Delhi. Uh, if you have seen in Delhi, there has been widespread protest by, by consumer that they have got integrated bills. Uh, mm -hmm. Almost 70% of bills in UP are, are based on previous uh, meter readings. So I think that smart meter, which is basically a technology uh, kind of a, um, a, a driven program, has shown its worth during the first of lockdown. And now we are seeing more and more utilities coming forward and adopting it. 
That's what I want to do. So now I'll come to uh, Rajiv sir to you. Uh, you know what we are noticing that uh, during this pandemic, uh, most of the public sector organization, especially the technology leaders, they are enabling their respective organization for business continuity plan. So can you share as to how uh, you engage from IT perspective in the last four months? In HPCL, uh, actually, uh, luckily we could in some way foresee this coming. So we started uh, on a war footing about one week before the lockdowns were declared. Right. So uh, in that sense, what we were able to do is that one week, 15 days, when our full uh, workforce was available, we uh, enabled most of our things, which are uh, only intranet enabled. Right. We moved them to the external interface. So everything that we our workforce does internally was available to do uh, externally. So here I'm talking of all the transaction systems mm -hmm. uh, primarily, which keep the uh, company running. And uh, uh, yeah, so we do have a pretty decent uh, video conferencing system. Right. Uh, but as the pandemic came, uh, came into full force, we realized that uh, our in-house or in-premise VC system is not enough. Right. And uh, uh, we explored various options. Cisco came to our rescue. They uh, provided us immediately some WebEx uh, facilities. And then we explored some other facilities as well. So today, uh, and in fact, within, uh, let's say, about 10 days of uh, lockdown, mm -hmm. all our uh, workforce is connected to a VC system. Right. All work is happening, uh, all meetings are happening, not only at the top level, but even at the GDMOS level, whatever interaction needs to happen mm -hmm. is happening through the uh, VC systems. Right. So to that extent, uh, yeah, we are pretty comfortable. Yes, now I'll move to Mr. Rao. Uh, Mr. Rao, Mr. Kumar was mentioning about the smart meter as to how the a small thing like a smart meter, which is integrated, has some level of sense and could provide you an know, integrated uh, platform, at least for billing and other purpose. That has played a quite immense role in the last four months for his organization. Would you like to share as to how you mitigated the challenge of COVID-19 and as to how digital transformation helps you in between? Because main focus during this uh, hard time of the COVID-19 pandemic is building a resilient, uh, resilient operations because you are in the power plant business and uh, our main uh, contribution in running the uh, power plant uninterruptedly. So NTPC has been a pioneer in adoption of technology for past many years. And with the emergence of COVID-19, the NTPC further intensified the use of modern technology tools to boost the production and uh, have a clean energy. And the main challenge before us to ensure business continuity and to sustain the business. To mitigate this, Challenges you had to initiate various steps. Uh, the current challenge of COVID-19 pandemic that has made the work from home culture and remote management of critical IT infrastructures and applications is a new normal. Some of the activities that uh, what you have taken during this period, because the, this COVID and probably this COVID-19 uh, pandemic declaration happened on 23rd March. So you have uh, geared up uh, to provide all the necessary uh, IT infrastructure, IT facilities to end user within a one week of declaration of the lockdown that is on the 24th March 2020. And yeah. our aim was to establish 100% services because in the power plant services, you have to, uh, the, you have to, as a corporate IT department, you have to ensure the smooth operations of our power plant without any interruptions. And uh, so for to that, uh, you have to ensure 100% services and support to all employees in all the areas. To facilitate this, you provided a collaboration platform in the form of Microsoft Teams to conduct all the official work. Even uh, what Mr. Soro was telling, uh, luckily you have also in NTPC, you have adapted this paperless office uh, prior to this one year before this uh, COVID uh, situations. So right. for file movement, approval and other thing, it was not, in, there was no hindrance and the things were happening very smoothly. And in, right. in addition to that, uh, this, uh, you had shared service centers like for procurement and all. 
and uh, you adopted Office 365 applications. Uh, even though, because in fact, you are going for Microsoft 365 now, but uh, you had the Microsoft, you had a tie up with Microsoft to provide this Office 365 on trial basis and you've adopted all across right. our enterprise. And uh, in addition to that, uh, I won't be believing, uh, you have provided 3000 VPN connectivity during this period to all our end users for accessing SAP application. And uh, in fact, to facilitate work from home, uh, it is mandatory and it is very much essential that the users have got access to SAP applications. So you extended this through by enabling SAP GUI configuration on user. Mr. Rao, I'll come back to you for the broader uh, question on the digital transformation again. I'll move to Mr. Sengdal. Uh, okay. Mr. Sengdal, you are two of our speaker and they were saying that you know they had some level of IT infrastructure already in place. For example, in the case of ESS, they were already working on the smart meter and some of that has played quite important role. For NTPC, they had some level of technology already available. They were able to, you know, sail through it, riding on that existing infrastructure. Can you share as to how Gale in last four months used technology and what kind of challenges did you face and how did you mitigate the challenge? Thank you, Ujay. Actually, uh, I'm happy to come and join this conference of AT Group and thanks for that. Uh, I, I, I agree with what Mr. Saurav and Rao has said that Gale also is a digital enabled company. Even prior to COVID, we have more or less most of the activities being carried out through digital interventions. And there was hardly any manual uh, interventions in most of the activities. Like if you talk to uh, sector wise, most of the billing to the customers were end to end digitized. There was hardly any uh, manual interventions in that part of it. What COVID did was that it expedited or it necessitated the use of technology more. And uh, fortunately, the technology was mature enough to take the load. Like uh, Mr. Law mentioned, giving connectivity to the employees to work from home. And uh, as far as our experience goes, it was a seamless experience to actually work from home. And uh, after the COVID uh, lockdown was, uh, I mean, came over and people started joining office, that time also some people have started working from office, but most of the other people were on rotational basis. So we did not found much difference that actual physical uh, working is uh, virtual working. And it has actually seamlessly taken us. If I talk about billing, it was being done through uh, digital mode anyway. But if we talk about uh, metering, that was also to, we have a state of the art NGMC, that is National Gas Management Center located in Noida, which collects all the data or the critical data from pipeline bases across the country. And it is being uh, coming through SCADA and OFC and different, different mechanisms and reaching there in an online basis. So it was real time uh, uh, data digitized company was already there. So in my view, we seamlessly took over. Uh, I mean, this, there are some positives from COVID. We, the, uh, the technology which we used to have some hindrances or some prohibitions or some inhibition that it may work, it may not work. By force, we have seen that it works. Right, right. Now I'll move to Mr. Sagan. Mr. Sagan, you heard four of our, uh, three of our speakers talking about as to how they have mitigated the challenge of COVID-19 in the last four months and as to how the technology helps them. But you know for sure that uh, for innovation to happen, over the last two, three years, the cloud as a technology has become a de facto platform. So even if you look, look at any organization, be it private or a PSU, if they are on a scalable platform, wherein uh, either the service or anything could be rolled out quite easily, they are able to basically sell through quite easily. Would you like to share your experience in the last four months as to how these new technologies such as AI, machine learning, uh, riding on the power of cloud is able to help public sector organization. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, uh, it's been a very humbling experience for, for all of us. Uh, uh, AWS Cloud has uh, millions of active customers globally uh, in public sector as well as in, in terms of commercial enterprises. And during the uh, last few months, we've, we've seen this uh, significant uptick in demand uh, in various areas, and and we've tried to contribute to 
you know, being a customer centric organization, uh, we're trying to contribute wherever we can. So there are a few areas which, uh, which really come out very strongly. Uh, we all know that uh, IT as an organization amongst other functions was the most stretched in terms of uh, not just handling internal demand, but uh, external demand as well. And uh, certain businesses which were more reliant on brick and mortar who had to suddenly shift to digital business models uh, saw that, that immediate change. So helping that shift happening in a matter of weeks rather than months. So some of the things that really helped our customers uh, who were working closely with AWS was how to do uh, lean IT transformation uh, using managed services, microservices-based architecture, serverless technology stacks, which AWS offers, AI services, which AWS offers, where you line, write a few lines of code and you, you send you know an image and get back labels or send a PDF, scan PDF, and, and get back structured data without having to set up a machine learning team in the first place. So the, the whole pace of innovation, which AWS Cloud is known for in the last 13 years, uh, actually translated into pace of change for, for a number of our customers in projects ranging from national contact tracing to situational awareness dashboards to moving completely on cloud to uh, literally uh, digital innovation projects. In fact, new products being developed in the matter of last three, four months. Uh, so as I said, it's been really humbling experience enabling the digital worker uh, right. with a number of AWS services and of course, enabling new digital models, uh, business right. models. Right. I'll go to Mr. Rao. Mr. Rao, what Mano was talking about that the role of cloud and as to how some of the AWS technology has been helping and they have a lot of customer and because of that they get a lot of data also they could actually understand the trend as to how you know digital transformation journey is happening for different sector for psus you know most of the psus are a bit old they have already invested a lot of money into technology they have you know legacy systems but what we have realized in last four months especially in times of covid 19 that the organization which had agile infrastructure they were very quick in terms of response. They were quite easily able to sail through. Uh, would you like to share if we have to set up any kind of IT infrastructure today as to what we should ensure so that this infrastructure remains agile, it should be remain resilient enough uh, to meet the challenge of any pandemic down the line, let's say in two years, three years, four years, be it the COVID-19 or may, maybe the milder one. One thing what I can see that you have to strike a balance between on-prem and as well as the cloud infrastructure. So some kind of uh, hybrid technology is the right, uh, higher hybrid cloud implementation is the right solution for these sort of situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, this will help us uh, the particularly ag agility and scalability point of view. And uh, what in NTPC now you are deliberating that uh, for some of our important applications, right? For example, now you are implementing our ERP, SAP on for our joint ventures, three numbers of joint ventures. So you have decided to go for cloud and you have picked up Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure is the platform where you are going to launch our uh, uh, SAP implementation. And other important, important applications like SAP and non-SAP implementation like hyper-converged infrastructure you have uh, or implementing in our own premises. So you have to strike a right balance uh, between both on-prem as well as the uh, cloud technology so that you can have the flexibility as well as uh, uh, the easy agility and uh, scalability, all the features you have. Right. So right. this is the what right kind of uh, uh, combination you are contemplating to have it. Now, another thing just I would like to say before, uh, because you see for all our non-ERP application, non-SAP applications we have uh, installed and operating from HCI, hyper infrastructure from our main data center at NOIDA. And you are planning to have the DR part instead of investing for it to have the, our own uh, data center, uh, own, DR for, uh, own DR implementation for uh, this HCI, you are going for the cloud implementation and already have floated our tender and very soon we are going to award a uh, DRAS DR as services for our non-SAP application. So you are right. striking a balance. So now I'll come to uh, Rajiv sir to you. These days there is focus on Atmanirbhar Bharat. 
uh, wherein the honorable prime minister has given a call and uh, there is effort being made that you know we should be able to create our own product and technology so from making india atmanirbhar point of view as to how technology can help psu achieve that dream of 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 the country hpcl has a very active uh, startup support system right and uh, as we all know most of the startups today are uh, technology startups uh, heavily into it what hpcl does is uh, we look at startups who have a proposition to uh, work in our core business areas right they can leverage digital that is uh, that is the way uh, uh, we have been able to take quite a few initiatives forward you, uh, some things have been actually implemented in our business area uh, while i may not share the exact details mm -hmm. uh, but uh, just to let you know uh, there have been uh, people, uh, uh, projects in very specialized areas such as pipeline management pipeline operations and management from integration detection then there have been some more uh, uh, commercial projects like uh, something in the area of uh, maps based lpg delivery right. stuff like that so th that is helping us uh, sort of create an ecosystem where uh, uh, youngsters can come in and uh, create the right products you mentioned about couple of key enablers for digital transformation especially at your organization also as to how the broader psu ecosystem in india can adopt digital transformation but in the end i would like to understand from you what are the key challenges three key challenges that you feel uh, from technology point of view we still need to overcome sir one we face is uh, today there are a lot of people chasing uh, uh, the similar use cases right right so while we have been able to identify some use cases internally Mm -hmm. we get from vendors is uh, more of a run of the mill uh, kind of things uh, everyone talks of the same kind of asset management same kind of uh, retailer and tech and stuff like that so uh, expanding that uh, base of uh, possibilities mm -hmm. is one challenge that we are seeing right and uh, another what i see is that culturally uh, PSUs are not geared up for failures. So we uh, and uh, digital and innovation by definition means failing fast and failing often. Right. 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 So this is one thing uh, we we find a little bit. We are trying to handle it culturally, but yes, it is it is a problem, especially with uh, uh, all the CVCs and uh, investigating and auditing agencies. Right. The oversight does play a, a, a role in holding us back. Absolutely. So culturally, it it is a challenge for the PSUs. Uh, that yes. Uh, now I'll move to Mr. Kumar since he's back, uh, and move to the different question altogether. You know, in last uh, three months back, two months back, I believe the Honorable Prime Minister also talked about the Atm Nirbhar Bharat, and it is a kind of clarion call where uh, the effort is being made that you know. make in india product should be promoted and the public sector organization should also take a kind of responsibility in terms of generating indigenous product but one thing is for sure this is good but that's also required lot of uh, you know having a proper ecosystem and also a culture of innovation that means you need to have a proper investment a proper understanding of technology would you like to share as to how your organization is looking at uh, atmanirbhar uh, concept of the government so thank you for raising this important uh, point and and it is not just in the last 3 months so let me give you some statistics i mean we are known for our for our for the uh, work that we did for the ujala program and so far we have done about 37 crore led bulbs that we have distributed except for the first few lots almost every led bulb has been assembled i will not use the word manufactured i will use the word assembled in india the localization has gone beyond 80% now you look at any other product that we have procured over the last 6 7 years all of it 
And, and let me give you the second example of, we also have a decentralized solar business where we have ordered about 300 to 400 megawatt of solar plants, panels. All of them are assembled in India. Uh, the, the people who are supplying us are BHA, they are Tata Power Solar Limited, Adani Group, and Central Electronics. The reason why we uh, have kind of achieved a make in India from the very beginning is, the, is, the, is our business model itself. Our business right. model is such that we get paid if my LED bulb continues to function over the next four or five years, or the LED lights does not fail in that time. So we insist on two things. Number one, you should have a manufacturing facility in India. And B, you should have network uh, of service centers in India. I just end by saying that I mentioned that we procured about 37 crore LED bulbs. Uh, all of us know Cisco is perhaps the biggest advertisers of LED lighting in, in, uh, in the country. They could not participate in even a single bit because they did not have manufacturing facility. Neither they had a service network in India. So we are very proud to say that we have always been um, uh, kind of make in India to begin with. And we will continue to do so as we move ahead. Dr. Sengar, now I'll come to you as we were as we are talking about the Atam Nirbhar Bharat program. Would you like to share as to how Gail is working on this concept of Atam Nirbhar Bharat, making things in India? and what kind of technology adoption is happening on that part? Yeah, thank you, Ujle. Actually, as Mr. Saurav also mentioned, this is not that suddenly Atma Nirbhar has come uh, three months back. This is an initiative which, if I recall correctly, there was a PSU conclave which was shared by Honorable Prime Minister maybe one and a half, two years back, when he pitched in for this concept of uh, going for Atma Nirbhar and self-independency. So, I mean, we are from uh, Petroleum Ministry, so there were stiff targets set for us and very concrete, actionable plan to do it. One of them which the government is taking is to import uh, reduction by 10% on the oil part. But let right. me come to gas sector, the gas, I mean, Gale, primarily we are working on gas sector. So there are a few things which I would like to bring to the notice of uh, August uh, gathering. One is that there's domestic gas production, which is being consumed in various sectors in India, and there is import of LNG. LNG is being imported and again distributed through various infrastructure pipeline, regas terminals to various customers at different places. Now there are various intrinsic things which Gale is doing and the customers to which Gale is giving the supplies, which makes uh, self-sufficiency and moves towards self-sufficiency more prominent. LNG import on energy terms basis is cheaper as well as more uh, robust in terms of energy consumption per unit basis. The outgo of cash is less, the forex outgo is less as compared to import of oil on energy terms. So that straight away makes sense to import more LNG and use it in various uh, customer side. Others is uh, Gale is in petrochemical business. So whatever indigenous production we do in the petrochemical sector to that extent, the import of petrochemical is also uh, reduced. Third, we, we are producing, I mean, gas supplying to fertilizer part, wherein again, uh, we uh, import some of the urea, that also is reduced. Fourth is the consumption of gas in the CNG part of it. If you import oil and use as a fuel and transport side, vis a -vis you use domestic gas and use it in CNG. That again makes a lot of sense. Then LPG. LPG again is uh, being imported in India to a great extent, whereas if you give domestic uh, PNG connections to various homes, so I mean Gale along with uh, its JV subsidiaries and various other private companies are making a lot many connections to various houses and it is being profiled in a big manner. Other right. part is there are government policies for uh, supporting make in India concepts like uh, we are supporting MSMEs to do, we give them priorities, purchase preferences. And there's one more latest initiative is that for value up to 200 crores, there is no international competitive bidding. And there's many other, various other schemes which we are anyway uh, supporting, which are coming from time to time from the government, which makes our drive towards Atmanirbhar uh, Bharat a more, more uh, meaningful one. Mr. Sagar, would you like to add on the point of innovation, especially under the Atam Nirbhar Bharat program? 
wherein the idea is to create as many product as possible be it technological and other within the country but you know for sure that you know that thing self organic to happen you need to have an ecosystem you need to have a right set of technology and then you should have people who do understand who are able to implement would you like to share anything as to how uh, we can take a right path wherein you already have an existing technology and you can use the new one and possibly you can gel it together you are able to justify your cost as well as your progress sure sure uh, in fact there are there are four areas where um aws customers are, are benefiting in in specifically when it comes to so if you look at you know atmanirbhar the english translation being uh, you know self reliance um and uh, the image thing that comes to mind is the the increase in self service culture right one of the ways you can implement self reliance within the knowledge economy is right. that the knowledge worker becomes uh, self service um uh, and what better way of encouraging self service than to have access to um uh, cloud services ranging from ai ml to augmented reality virtual reality robotics Uh, even literally controlling satellites from the convenience of your web browser working from home uh so that's one way uh, the aws uh, cloud technologies help in 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 that self service culture another way uh, that we are encouraging atmanirbhar bharat is by encouraging make in india startups so startups have been part of the aws uh, community for uh, 13 years now uh both as customers as well as as partners we have tens of thousands of startups uh and and independent software vendors who are listed on the marketplaces within aws where our customers can simply choose if they need a solution for security if they need a solution for antivirus if they need a solution for let's say erp or content management uh and there's a choice of startups that they can use including make in india startups uh, which can add to their portfolio of uh cloud based applications that they have uh running on aws another way that we are encouraging this uh, uh we are about to announce the launch of a cloud innovation center along with the government of india where uh what we are bringing together is uh the thought leadership of government of india the some of the really uh, big societal impact challenges like in the area of sustainable uh energy or in the area of water conservation in the area of smart utilities uh, smart agriculture solving some of these challenges where aws is co-investing in this cloud innovation center with expertise across the globe where we will solve these challenges for india working alongside our customers uh who are you know market segment leaders in in these domains and and take them through to production through prototype through ideation and and the fourth thing of course is you know amazon is known for marketplaces so enabling these marketplace technologies for exchanging ideas exchanging technology exchanging data uh those are the some of the things that uh, the way we are we are encouraging atmanirbhar bharat right i'll take uh, from the mano points of the platform approach and uh, we'll go to mr kumar uh mr kumar across public sector what we noticed that you know there are a lot of green shoots there are a lot of uh, uh different organization implementing great technology solution but those are limited to with that particular pc only and for anybody to be self reliant be it a particular organization it is really important that we create a culture of innovation which i said earlier also if somebody is innovating there has to be some incentive so for example let's say your psu is essl you know innovate something and this is this could be applied to any psu other psu can use it can we actually work around some mechanism where in some sort of incentive be it you know tax rebate or other thing could be given especially in the platform mode for example what mano was saying that you know you have a aws platform on that platform you have multiple services that you can run quite easily and anybody or everybody who joins they benefit from it and the pl- platform owner they also actually benefit to a certain amount so within psu can we look at having that kind of platform approach okay so uh, let me answer this by first mentioning the platform that we have created and honestly speaking if you look at esl what is esl esl is a platform created by four psus 
And honestly, it is part of PFC, REC, and, and NDPC. And what has uh, ESL achieved? Something that was never achieved in, in various energy services. So if you ask me, it was a startup. And the four PSUs along with the uh, power ministry created this platform with innovation in mind and finance behind it. So we have carried on this culture. We do an annual event that we call Inspire. Uh, and and uh, it, has, it is basically, we uh, started off in 2018, where we uh, brought out five or six areas in clean energy and also digital uh, transformation of utilities. And we put out these challenges for innovators to come and, and uh, provide their ideas and, and, and what they can. We had a, a set of international jury which looked at all those uh, ideas that, that came in and selected three or four of them. 2018 was the first attempt uh, because it, we didn't give much of a publicity, much of a time. Honestly speaking, we didn't get very high quality outcomes. 2019, almost a thousand startups participated and uh, the jury selected about eight or nine of them and actually awarded four. And I'm glad to report that we've already started commercializing two out of the four. Uh, and that was the whole intent that we will, it's, it's not about tax rebate, tax rebates will come, will go, uh, that's, that's something which is beyond us. But what does an innovator or a startup want? An innovator or a startup wants two things, A, a market and B, capital. And through this uh, 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 initiative that we have uh, created, co-created with actually World Bank, with ADB, with many other international uh, uh, institutions, including NTPC. I mean, they were uh, uh, very much supporting this activity uh, last year, and I'm sure they will continue to support that. So we have already started commercializing two, and we are looking at commercializing the others, and and also to continue inspire 2021. Of course, we can't have it this year, but uh, we will have another addition in 2020. So we are doing this bit for the clean energy space. Now I'll move to Mr. Rao and I'll go back to the first question that was around the emerging technology. Uh, Mr. Rao, you are a technologist and you know, uh, for the innovation to continue, as I said earlier, the platform is absolutely going to be the cloud. And within that cloud, uh, you have next generation technology like AI, machine learning, blockchain, or anything you can think of, you can implement. Uh, would you like to share as to how NTPC, your organization, how are you experimenting with the uh, emerging technologies? Did it help you in some way? Technology is, uh, as I was telling in my first question, uh, when I'm answering to your first question, the mm -hmm. technology is the, always is the first preference for NTPC. And our chairman always talks about drives for innovation and adoption of uh, emerging technologies in day-to-day -day activities. And without technology, it's such a power measure, NTPC uh, cannot sustain the performance what it is doing today. And uh, you are uh, going with the digital transformation. Basically, our digital transformation is basically on the four uh, uh, strategic themes. That is the digital first, steady march towards digital future. And another, secondly, data innovation to unlock the business value contained in enterprise data. Enterprise excellence, that is agile, data-driven, efficient digital NTPC. And uh, at the last, uh, IT people primacy, competent IT professional for upgrading IT skills of present IT executives so that they can embrace the new technology. And uh, well, adoption of the best in class technology for AI, ML, IoT, data analytics, and cloud environment integrated with the present IT and OT system with a secure manner. Our main focus at this moment is to infuse IT in the OT area and particular renewable energies and you are taking a greater strides in uh, uh, renewable energy to great extent. So you are putting our emphasis and how best you can adapt to this new emerging technologies, uh, harnessing the benefits of clean energy and uh, you have created a digitalization group and it is a step in the right directions. The sole objective is to make digital drive a successful journey in NTPC business growth path. And right. regarding this, uh, you have already uh, gone for uh, online asset health index and advanced pattern, pattern recognition for early warning and diagnostics and to facilitate predictive maintenance and equipment efficiency and performance benchmarking. And okay. in addition to that, you have gone for load demand forecasting so, so that you can predict the schedule generation for NTPs using the demand in the beneficial states of the plant. 
and estimates the cost of power generation of plants and supplying power to the benefit states. Right. And uh, recently, you have implemented smart attendance system using biometrics. And uh, that is uh, basing on the geofencing. Uh, you can, during the COVID-19 contact base uh, biometric, you wanted to implement. So you use uh, the mobile base uh, system. And right. uh, that is basically working on the uh, smart face recognition system. And right. uh, so another area which is pertinent to our OT area, that is molecular tube leak leakage. So you have uh, doing a POC kind of thing for boiler tube leak analysis and uh, prediction too. And uh, particular robotic process automation, uh, the pilot you are carrying out. And uh, that too, you are adapting the drones for our air strike monitoring and the project right. monitoring also. So yes, yes. this is the right combination of technology because in the power say what is our observation is that there is not much huge cases in mm -hmm. power utility and power sectors. So you are uh, uh, tapping the talent, uh, you are interacting with the startups and as well as the grown-ups for adapting the new technologies and to make a proper new business cases and to adapt the same in NTPC so that our business objectives can be achieved. Right, right. I'll move to Mr. Singer. Mr. Singer, Mr. Rao was talking about a couple of things like contactless, drone, user drone, uh, then other use, smaller use cases of AI in a broader sense. Would you like to share as to how you look at the role of AI and machine learning or any emerging technology in your organization? And would you like to share something as to how you are using it? Yeah, thank you. Actually, I agree with Mr. Rao. And most of the things he has mentioned, we are also adopting to some level or a different levels, like use of drone. And our ours is a pipeline company also having transmission network of more than 12,000 kilometer of gas pipeline and almost 2,000 of LPG, 2,000 kilometer of LPG pipeline. So some terrains are uh, earlier we used to have foot patrolling, then uh, patrolling through a helicopter as well. But now in some of the sectors we have used drone technology to monitor right. whether there is some uh, encroachment on ROUs and things like that, how the things are changing. So that technology is in use. Plus in operation, like petrochemical plant is a big complex we have in a place near, Pata, near Kanpur, where we keep on updating on technology side, on control, metering, analytics. And in our, we have recently launched a, a AI-based uh, small uh, computer, which is self-intelligent uh, self computer based. Like it do, does routine transactions with much more accuracy and it, it actually replaces routine transactions in a much, much better way and with highly accurate uh, manner. So it replaces some, some in some manner in manual human intervention to a great extent. Right. Otherwise also in project monitoring, uh, operation and maintenance, customer experiences, we keep on upgrading the technology. And uh, last year we have run digital strategy wherein we are seeing where are the gaps like ERP systems and how to integrate IT, OT, and things like that. So it's it's an evolving process for us also, and we keep on upgrading our system now. Mr. Sagal, I'll come to you because you run a lot of digital innovation program. Uh, you know, one thing we could make out based on the conversation, Mr. Rao and Mr. Sangal, uh, Singal, uh, just the view they both of them uh, pointed out that, that they are using a lot of, uh, you know, uh, next generation technology for automation. They are trying to use for that. Would you like to share based on your experience as to how uh, two, three things in two, three particular area, AI, ML could be used in an existing framework of the PSU. And that will give a lot of, you know, uh, cost arbitrage or uh, productivity arbitrage or any other things. When you look at uh, applications of AI, ML, and that's a fairly broad subject, right? Um, but if you, uh, one of the, uh, one of the mechanisms I use with uh, with my customers, which help is, you know, if you look at your your senses, right, uh, sight, uh, sound, and so on and so forth, speech. Um, if you just map your senses, right, and and you think of uh, first of all the digital worker, how can you augment those senses um, to make the digital worker more efficient? So, for instance, I can read uh, text at a certain speed. Uh, but I can listen much faster. I can consume more information if I'm listening to the same text. Uh, so can I use uh, AI services for text-to-speech to, speech 
to augment the capabilities of my digital worker now if you extend this definition to the organization and if you if you treat the organization as you know uh, a sensory organization so what right. what can computer vision bring to the table for and and then of course the use cases will change depending on whether you're looking at uh, transmission lines or whether you're looking at utilities and and so on and so forth but in general where you will see the uh, the true application of machine learning and ai is when it is augmenting the capabilities of the organization where it's it's giving more decision making power to the uh, decision makers where it is uncovering more line of sight uh, from the source of the data to uh, to the decision makers so i know i'm not being very specific with with ideas there are plenty of them and and right. happy to take that up in one of our cloud innovation center projects but but i thought i'll i'll share the the mantra which helps me in in communicating this rather than some use cases right i'll go this will be the last question because we are in the fake end of this panel discussion uh, so i'll go to mr kumar uh, mr kumar would you like to uh, share as to how you are trying to use next generation technology within your organization to improve whatever you are doing right now uh, just to scale yourself okay uh, thanks for asking the question so what we are as you know i mentioned that we are doing the smart meter program now as a result of the program today we have for nearly 15 lakh consumers and it's also growing a uh, 15 minute data uh, consumption data power consumption data so we have already um, uh, signed up with two startups one in the us one in uh, india where they are using machine learning and artificial intelligence and using the uh, using this information to create a heat map of each house and without getting intrusive by without getting into a house and measuring uh, what kind of equipments are there using this data we are able we are we will be in the next 3 months telling you um uh, mohammad ujale that your energy consumption right in your air conditioner is higher than what is in the flat uh, next to you so this is the kind of of, of data and analytics that we are working on and we will roll this out in all those utilities where we have smart meters just for an information that this is what your Uh, AC looks like maybe it's time for you to now change and go to a more efficient air conditioner. So this is what we are working on. Right. So with this, we come to the conclusion of this panel discussion, and I think you all shared a lot of input around as to how you are using technology to mitigate the challenge of COVID-19, and also on the part of Prime Minister Clarion call for Atm Nirbhar Bharat, you also share about as to how your organization are trying to create things within the country. and we also focused on the key enablers for public sector organization in last four months and then in the end manav also very eloquently spoke about the use cases of ai and how those could be extrapolated in different sector so with this thank you so much for being such a wonderful panelist thank you so much please feel free to visit the help center in the lobby for any queries related to this event We have an amazing lineup ahead so stay with us.